Coming up on Tokuga TV, Oishi A8, I've got the one and only Roy Yamaguchi joining me at the OG Roy's and Hawaii Kai. Watch us! Greetings and aloha, Pali here, and as always, mahalo for tuning in to Dokuga TV on Hawaii News Now, K5, and KHNL. On this episode, we continue our special Dokuga TV Oishi 808 series. Here at Roy's Hawaii Kai, we meet one of the proponents, purveyors, participants, and most importantly, pioneers that kicked off the culinary renaissance of Hawaiian fusion cuisine that's taken the island, state, and world by storm since the early 90s. A key landmark in the Hawaii Kai area, the original Roy's restaurant has been a symbol of dining excellence since 1988, and as a true fanboy of his food, I was stoked that Olena and I would be able to spend time with the Roy Yamaguchi on tonight's Dokuga TV Oishi 808 episode. All right, well, we're back for another episode of Dokoga TV Oishi 808 series, and I'm with the one and only Chef Roy Yamaguchi, and we're at the original Roy's location, too. This is the original Roy's. Wow, so tell me about the beginning of it, and, you know, it's got so much history. How did you come to be here? Well, we started 31 years ago, and actually my cousin had found this location. So he lived, she lived, uh, he and she lived on Port Rock, and as they would pass this building, they would see and, you know, she called me up one day and said, hey Roy, I think this location would be great for a Roy's restaurant or a restaurant. So I said, okay, fine. So I flew out, took a look at it and um, just fell in love with the space. Sometimes you have this feeling that, you know, something could really happen. So I came out here, sat out here and just spent hours and hours just looking at the traffic and realized that this can be a special place. So that's how Roy's was founded. I feel like maybe you took a chance because that was before Hawaii Kai even really turned into this, you know, huge residential area and Kalani Ano Ole wasn't even that expanded at that yeah, point. Yeah, at, at that time, you know, it was basically, you know, a couple of lanes going back and forth. And uh, out here, you know, it was, you know, very residential. And when I had looked for an architect, someone had told me, hey, listen, you know, Hawaii Kai is a graveyard for restaurants. I would not put a restaurant in Hawaii Kai. But for me, I wanted something that was very, very special. I wanted a destination restaurant. I wanted to belong to a community. So that was the two reasons why I picked Hawaii Kai, because I really wanted to belong to a neighborhood. Take me back a little bit. I know your origins are in Japan. And, you know, what inspired you to start cooking? and how that evolved for you? Well, you know, I, I grew up in Japan. I uh, grew up in an army base, U.S. Army base. And um, I was taking, well, I was, you know, I was taking different classes with my friend. Uh, I took a wood shop and stuff. And one day he said, Roy, you know, you should really consider taking uh, home ec. So I said, well, what's home ec? And he goes, don't worry about it. We'll meet a lot of girls. So, so that was the start of it. And, you know, I took home ec. I really enjoyed it. You know, I really enjoyed because I used to cook at home. I would make a, you know, chicken teriyaki or, or, or beef teriyaki using my father's, you know, teriyaki sauce. I used to do a lot of that. When I took the cooking class, you know, I really enjoyed it. And I invited my school counselor one day to be my guest. Um, and I had cooked a turkey. And uh, he really enjoyed it. So he says, hey, Roy, you thought about cooking for your career? So I said, mm, you know, Never have, but it sounds good. 
Uh, so he did the research and found the Culinary Institute of America. Uh, so I ended up moving from Japan and uh, went to uh, New York to uh, enroll in cooking school and you know, the rest is history. Did you ever think that you would reach the heights that you have as far as culinary and building an empire perhaps? No, not at all. You know, my, my dream, you know, back then was to be a cook. And I had the opportunity to open my first restaurant in Los Angeles. And after that, you know, my second chance to open up uh, in, in, in Hawaii Thai. So it's, 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 it's been great. What's happening now with you? And, you know, you've had other iterations of your cuisine moving forward. Uh, what can we expect? Well, you know what, it's, it's great because, you know, you have to understand that, um, you know, I founded Roy's based on my dream. You know, it was my dream to open a restaurant like this. So I designed the restaurant with the architect. You know, I designed the kitchen with our, with our kitchen consultant. Um, you know, I picked all the colors, the silverware, flatware. So it was my dream that I had. And, and I wanted this restaurant to be me a part of me and, and as we continue to grow and have grown you know there's individuals you know our chefs our managers the people that work with me are a, really a big part of, of creating our success so they have bought into my dream and have the same vision and goals as i do so we're now able to really transform the dream and you know the idea that i had 31 years ago to something that's a lot more uh, involving, you know, a lot of great minds uh, and creative chefs. Like a cohesive dream. Yeah, you know, it's a dream come true for everyone. I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a it's a true marriage. And lots of babies. A lot of babies. <laughs> you have a lot yeah, of exactly. children that you've raised that have been with you for decades. Well, it's it's kind of interesting because you know we have it's, it's interesting because you know going back thirty years, thirty one years, and you know the individuals that have started with us now they have families of their own and their kids have worked with us. Uh, and then we have families that have come to Roy's from the very, very start. And now, you know, we have three, four generations of their family, you know, dining at Roy's. So it's, 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 it's really heartwarming to see that, you know, and to really belong, because that was my dream is to belong to a community. Uh, and, you know, we've got questions from the masses and just some fun questions to okay. kind of ask yeah, you off of the course. cuff. Um, what is your favorite food, like your go-to comfort food that you create? Well, well you know, my, I have to say that, you know, it's, it's always been fried chicken. Uh, but, you know, before fried chicken, because you have to understand there's, there's a couple of things that play into this. As a kid, when I grew up, when I was growing up, I used to always eat ramen. So I used to always go out um, and, and take my, my, um, my allowance. And, and, and go off base because we lived on base. And if I go off base and I would eat ramen. And, um, you know, it would be a set, you know, ramen, white, uh, rice, and then gyoza. And then so I would eat that. But, you know, as I got older. And um, your palate kind of evolved. No, it's just that, you know, I, I can't eat too much, you know, noodles at one time. But I still enjoy, you know, ramen is still my go to food. But at the same time, um, you know, back in 1970, when, when they had the World's Fair in Osaka, mm. um, they intru introduced Kentucky Fried Chicken for the first time in Japan. And I kept on going back because I never really had fried chicken as a kid. So now I, I'm in love with fried chicken. So I love fried chicken. And so fried chicken and ramen is my go-to. Not just one, it has to be two. So. Yeah, also. <laughs> what is one thing that you can't stand and you won't eat? You know, I, I've been to uh, Thailand many times and, and I tried eating, you know, fresh durian and it just, you know, I can have it in ice cream or something, but to eat it fresh, is, it's, it's been pretty difficult. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's like a, a garlicky, vanilla-y, Yeah, strange. something about the texture and this, I don't know, it's just a combination yeah. of everything I think. Okay. As one of the founders of the Hawaii Food and Wine Festival, tell me a little bit about how that process, you know, of having the idea to do it, and then when you're able to execute it, how did that all happen? Well, it's 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 really interesting because you know, Chef Ellen and I, we used to always do a farmer bureau event at the original Roy's, and you know, we used to do it for about two, three hundred people, and we were kind of growing out of it, so. One day I had asked uh, Denise Hayashi, um, who's now Denise Yamaguchi. <laughs> <His wife. laughs> but, but back then I asked Denise, 
and Dean Okimoto, I said, hey, listen, you know what? This Farm Bureau event is, you know, kind of gone to its peak. Maybe we should really think about doing something other than this, maybe doing something bigger. Denise thought about it and with her background in fundraising and governmental affairs and community relations, she uh, said, okay, you know what? Maybe we can do a bigger event. So I said, well, that's great. So I said, well, it'll be good if we make it a big event, not for us, but to make it for the state. But Denise went to, you know, the different hotels and to the state of Hawaii, you know, HTA, individuals that really wanted to participate and become stakeholders. So and that's how the event grew. You know, they became our partners. And now, you know, 10 years later, because this will be, you know, our 10th anniversary, uh, we have a lot of great chefs um, that have become ambassadors mm -hmm. uh, for the state of Hawaii and for our festival. With all the chefs that come, you know, they're able to utilize all the great products that we have in Hawaii. So, you know, they're now learning more about Hawaii, not only about food, but also about the culture. They love coming here, mm -hmm. right? They, they enjoy coming here, but more now because now they learn more about the culture and they learn about the agricultural fishing or ranching landscape. And they're now able to utilize all of these great products and come up with dishes, utilizing everything from Hawaii. So, you know, in that sense, it's really cool. And we have gone and, and gotten a lot of partnerships and friendship with, you know, the hotels and airlines. We're working as a team, and, and the goal is not to have one property uh, reap the benefits, but for the state of Hawaii, because at the end of the day, the money that we raise goes back into the community for the different foundations and charities that the uh, foundation provides for. Love it. Because it's a, a nonprofit entity. Well, speaking of dining at Roy's, uh, you're gonna prepare some dishes for us today. Yes. What are you gonna be making? We have some clams from Nomilo Fish Pond on, on the island of Kauai. Mm -hmm. And it's a, a unique fish pond because they get water from the Pacific Ocean and they also have some uh, fresh uh, spring wells. So, you know, the water comes out fresh. So it's pretty unique and it's a third generation family that's been taking care of this, this fish pond. So they've been working with clams and oysters. So I'm gonna be doing a like an Asian style uh, curried clams uh, from there. Mm. What kind that. of curry? I love curry. Well, I'm going to be doing kind of like a Thai, Thai yeah. curry style. Okay. So I also like to do a dish with uh, chicken. And uh, I love eating chicken. I eat chicken all the time. And over at Goen, uh, you know, Chef Russell has made a chicken that I really enjoy eating. So it's it's a chicken that uh, comes with a, um, a uh, butternut squash lasagna. So you can eat the lasagna as a vegetarian dish if you like. Okay, great. I'm kind of drooling a little. <laughs> Looking forward to that. Oh, cheers. Man. Cheers. Oh my. I have to say, watching a culinary master yeah. like Roy Yamaguchi is yeah. just mesmerizing. He prepared for us a very special Oishi 808 presentation. So Let this me... is a ahi kudo available ahi kudo. at the Roy's here in Hawaii Kai. Did you get a pepper too? Pepper I two? did. It's on. I'm scared. I know. Uh, Do you like spicy? <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I think I'm going to take it off, unless it's pickle. No, it's not. It's not? Oh, oh, the tip of my tongue. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Mmm, mmm. The sea asparagus. Mm. Amazing seafood. Mmm. Oh, wait, should I do that one? Mmm, do that one. I gotta, I'm not quite too sure about that bite, Olena. I'm just gonna verify my mm -hmm. initial impressions mm. if you don't mind. That's amazing, the freshness, the flavors. Mm. Mm. It's like a citrusy aftertaste. That's amazing. I have to try one more as well. <laughs> you weren't sure of your initial impressions either, mm. right? Now we got to see this as this was being created. Help yourself, I know you love curry. Mm -hmm. So you got to see him make it yes. step by step, right? Yes. It was more like I got to drool while he was <laughs> making this. What were some of the highlights for you? Because I know you were also like asking him questions. So just to kind of talk story with him, talking about some of the places that, that he likes. And I love the question you asked about what's his favorite comfort food. It's like my, my favorite question to find out from mm -hmm. chefs because of the fact that 
they can cook anything that they could possibly want to eat. So how would you top that? Or, or how would you, yeah. you know, where would you go? So chicken, fried chicken. That's crazy. Yeah. Okay, so these are clams from the island of Kauai. That's a very special island, isn't it? Oh, yeah, I'm born and raised. <laughs> mm. Oh, they're super soft. Mm. Wow. I don't think I've ever tasted anything like this no. before. And the curry, I'm kind of a hit and miss curry guy. The only curry I really learned to love was in Hokkaido, of all oh. places. But this is very nice and it's not too spicy. Mm. You've got, yeah, you've got the salty with the curry. Mm -hmm. And then you've got lemongrass. Lemongrass, yeah, that, that pops through. That really gives it. And I really want more curry, so I'm gonna use, <laughs> I'm gonna try and use my clam shell. If only there was a bowl of rice we could pour the, mm. right? That's how you eat yeah. this. Oh. That's really delicious. Confession? Yeah. I don't really like clams, but I like these clams. Really? <laughs> yeah. We'll find out so much about Olam on Double Guy TV. I love that. It depends. Chicken and garlic. Got it. Right good. on top. Are you gonna cut it? Oh, am I just supposed to put it in my mouth? Out. <laughs> and look at that. Perfectly done. Cheers. Mm. Wow. Mm. That is really moist and I love the little crispy edge on the skin mm -hmm. yeah on the skin what was he cooking the chicken in it was like thyme garlic butter i'm tempted to eat that clove of garlic but do it i don't want to offend you do it <laughs> i'm gonna have a sliver of the garlic because i love garlic i am glad to know that one of the questions i got to ask him was if you only had one spice mm. yeah and garlic was it oh mm. i'm gonna do a little game changer action. Uh oh. I'm gonna put the chicken in the curry sauce. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so I love about filming with Olena because she's a sauce person too. Mm -hmm. Is it good? Have we it's elevated really the good. game? And right. that's what it's all about is just enjoying really delicious food. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, you're mm. right. That's just next level. So this is a squash lasagna yeah and he said it was vegan too right yes and there's a a pumpkin layer an hour and a half to cook wow you know i have a confession to make when we started in oishi eight years ago one of the things that i've always wanted to do was royce mm, yeah yay. so today is an awesome the very awesome bucket uh, list bucket list. Uh, oh, you should have done the interview then. No, because it's good because like you guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you're awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I met him, I think when I was 17. Okay. And I worked at a restaurant in Waikiki. He used to come in and he had this red windbreaker jacket. People were like, do you see the guy over there at the bar wearing that red jacket? That's Roy Yamaguchi. And I was like, what? No way. <laughs> so unassuming. Oh, mm. So good. That's really good. Mm. It's like the squash and the pumpkin mm -hmm. took the place of tomato meat sauce mm. or whatever it would normally be in lasagna. This is fantastic. That's amazing. Yeah, I can't say enough about this lasagna. Initially, I'm I'm a purist when it comes to meat sauce, cheese, 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 meat sauce, right for mm -hmm. lasagna. But the squash and the um, pumpkin in here it will give you the same sensation, albeit a little bit lighter, a little bit sweeter but mm -hmm. this is i would do this like i would order the same set again mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. excellent with the relaunch of our dohoga tv oishi 808 series we really wanted to highlight a number of key restaurants that have developed a way to help with the very challenging times that we're all experiencing right now as brilliant and incredible as the dining experience is at any and all of roy yamaguchi's restaurants Roy's has been offering delicious, to-go, cooked, and ready-to-enjoy family meals and dinners that have all of Roy's signature quality, flavors, and flair at a great price. For more information or to order from their latest carry-out specials, visit them online or call.
I'm Kelly Boy de Lima from the group Capella. Well, the beginning of music uh, for me was uh, actually when I was in intermediate school, uh, Kaimiki Intermediate. And um, it was uh, a, a class uh, that uh, really uh, introduced me into uh, Hawaiian music. Um, I, I listened to it since I was, I was real young. You know, my dad loved all the different uh, Palani Vaughn and all the different groups that I would listen to on, on records. And, um, but it wasn't until I met Miss Lau from Kaimiki Intermediate that really uh, got me interested. You know, she taught me Kalana Napua. She taught me uh, the Lord's Prayer in Hawaiian. And it was, a, um, a, a, I guess, Ohana Omele class it was called or whatever. But uh, this wonderful, small, little, tiny, little Hawaiian lady that really, uh, um, you know, got me uh, interested in, uh, you know, the Hawaiian music and just music in general. I played with Timo and we were playing in school. And then when I met Tiva and I listened to him play bass, I said, wow, this is it. And that's where we put, ka, you know, Kapena together. And uh, my dad actually gave me the name Kapena. As always, for tuning in to Dohogai TV, Japan Mania, and see you next week.